Hey guys, it's me, Timmy Tab here on the second channel, and today we're here with another car review. And today, as you can see, we are reviewing the 1987 Ferrari F40. Now, I love this machine. It is beautiful. And it was a car, age old, known for its advances in technology, along with the McLaren F1. Uh, yeah, the McLaren F1 and the Porsche 959. This was just alongside them with its developments in speed and serenity. Now, uh, let's get into the stats and how you can obtain this wonderful masterpiece. So you can buy the 1987 Ferrari F40 from the Auto Show for a million two hundred thousand credits, or from the auction house, which I don't know how much they want the auction house for. This is a range; it'll probably be. Depending on how many upgrades you can get, so I can't give you a good price on that, but you might be able to get it cheap just if you get lucky. Um, now, the power figures and for every, what this car is is quite surprising 478 horsepower, 424 foot pounds of torque, and it weighs 2,980 pounds. Now, that's say the Ford Focus RS, but in a supercar, in a virtual supercar, this was back then. In a supercar, this, this is what it was back then, as a supercar, and like, back then it was amazing. Now we've got this in a normal coupe. No, it's, it's, it's a normal hatchback. I'm not, that shows advanced in technology and stuff like that. But anyway, um, it's on road tires standard, or I'm guessing it's road tires are the equivalent to 1987 race tires or something like that. I know if you go into the thing, it only says you can go on the streets, so, you know. Yeah, some road tyres, what we know. It's rear wheel drive and it's mid engined. An engine in the middle means it's got a good weight distribution 50 50, so it's not gonna overhaul like the rear end. Um, is it if it's too much heavier than the front end? Um, it's got wait, it's got two foot, two foot fives on the front, three three fives in the rear, so it's got good grip. Um, is rear engine mid rear wheel drive mid engine so it's not going to slide as much and since it's mid engine it, it doesn't get off the line as well as like front engine or rear engine do because it's got to slug the whole of the body not just a certain bit and let the rest of it follow got to slug it all and so yeah it's not the best launching but it's acceleration is pretty good it's control is phenomenal listen to the blow off noise oh um and surprisingly, it's, it, it has a, a, a it's kind of small, if I have to be honest. Only a 2.9 litre, but then when you read the rest of it, it's a 2.9 litre twin turbocharged V8. Now, obviously, we're back in the 1978s here, 1987s, should I say. But how did they only get a 478 horsepower of twin turbo V8? <laughs> it's like, damn, we get like a thousand plus out of our twin turbo V8s now. Um, 0 to 16, 3.7 seconds, 0 to 108.1 seconds, 60 to 0, 148 feet, 100 to 0, 364 feet, with a top speed of the miracle speed at that time of 200 miles an hour. Now, you see, I, I speak highly of this car because I love it. I will say, I was the first one to say it is a phenomenal car. It is one of the best advances in technology we've had to this day. Um, but obviously, in today's day and age, it doesn't really compare. It is an A class in Forza Horizon 3, about 774 or something like that. Around there, like, three quarters way through A class and all that. And that's about giving some other cars. You've got the Ford Focus RS, the new one, Mercedes A class, um, Ford GT, the old one. And that's what it got compared with, but they're new and they got more power, they got more control. Like the brakes on this thing aren't very good, but that's until 1987. If we go on the Ford Focus RS, they're probably so much better, but they're brand new. So you can't really compare it to a model today. But if I had to, I would have put it somewhere around, mm, I don't know, possibly the i8. And I don't have a lot of horsepower. So it, that's where I would have put it, but that's still in today's. Um, you know, thing, uh, basically, oh my god, what I'm saying, it's in 
today's new technology cars. If I was put up against anything, it'd probably be against the like of the list. Uh, they've not really took many old cars that have gone very fast. The 959, obviously, it was fighting against that back then. Um, and you've also got the Nis Nis Nissan Nismo, but as you can already see, we're not that slow. So that's fine. But yeah. I just want you. Right, so when we get to the next lap, I'm going to give you a whole lap just listening to the engine. The blow off noise of this thing is amazing. And if you saw. The I know my controller is connected. It's fine. It will all be fixed in just a second. <laughs> yeah, as I had it on charge and unplugged it, so it just had no charge left. But um, yeah, this Ferrari looks beautiful, sounds beautiful. It drives in actually really well. It doesn't get much oversteer. Of course, if you push like you push any real drive car like a moron, then it will slide. But like it's got three three fives on the back. I think said, and that's like that's big tires and some cars today don't even have them tires on. Like when you max upgrade them, but this has them on a standard. So I'll leave you a full lap to just listen to the engine and the blow off of that turbocharged V8. So I'm going to talk quietly for a minute if you've adjusted your sound so now you can get it back and in three seconds I was speaking in my normal tone of voice so that is how the Ferrari F40 sounds and it is phenomenal like this car say that sound like tin cans and you get this thing in the 1987s that looks so nice that's so nice it looks nice I prefer this over the F50 um, I know that's a lot of very opinion based but to me I've just love the F40. I've never really like I've learned the background to the F40 and everything, how it was built and how it was trying to achieve 200 miles an hour. It was one of the first cars ever to reach 200 miles an hour. And like obviously, I've come to love this car, the F50. I've never really learned anything about. It. I've never really wanted to. I've not really preferred the looks of it. I don't like the vents in the front of it. Whereas this thing, it just looks so clean and so smooth in the red, and it is brilliant. Now we'll get onto times because I know it's probably what you're all here for. So. I said the 959 will probably be its um, target, which is a 107167. Um, but then I said the i8 as well, which is a 107301. But it got lower than that. It got lower than the Ford Focus RS, which is the new one, which is 107634. But what it did didn't do worse than was the Porsche 959 with assists. Which just beats the kind of like ATSV as well, but in the Ferrari F14 to 53rd place with the 107768, which is just a tenth of a second down on the brand new Ford Focus RS, which has a lot of power, which has better brakes, which has a better chassis, which has better uh, materials to build it, probably lighter, probably has more power. So you know, it's. It's not done bad, it's about the same pair as the Ford Focus RS. And, like, it does the same performances, and this is a retro supercar. I don't know if in real life I would choose between the Ford Focus RS and the Ferrari F40. I definitely know I would pick the Ferrari F40 because it's a piece of historical masterpiece. And yeah, so I, I speak incredibly highly of this Ferrari F40, and I love it so, so much. But anyway, I'll leave you the rest of the gameplay. You can listen to that sweet, sweet blow off of that turbo, ch uh, turbo charged, twin turbo charged V8. <laughs> and yeah, enjoy the rest of it. That's it from me, Timmy's Hyper. Signing out.